say, fishing is an accessory sport. You can never have enough fishing gear. I've been planning this next trip for over 12 months, and in the two hours since I left home, I remembered about a dozen things that could make my trip that little bit more special. So, dropped in a Tack World sale, got a bag full of goodies. You should see inside that joint. It is unbelievable. In fact, I'm gonna put it on record, one of the best fishing tackle stores in the country. It's the one I'm going to catch next. The fish I hope to catch next is the Australian bass. They are iconic Aussie natives. I love them so much. They've been stocked in a lot of impoundments, particularly up north, Queensland, New South Wales. But these fish we're targeting today, they are potentially pure Australian, wild Australian bass. They may have even been stocked as fingerlings. Some of these fish potentially grow to 60 centimetres. If I get one over 40, I'll be absolutely stoked. I can't wait. Scotch and Sorrento. They're Hereford bulls. They're about 18 months old. They weigh around 900 kilos. And they are just so beautiful to look at these beasts and pretty tame too. This is Karoonda Park. I stayed here last night. This is stage one of our journey. It's half cattle station, working farm, and half school camp and accommodation. Awesome part of the world. So good that kids get to come here and see how a real farm works. And to stand this close to these incredible beasts, just too cool. Hang out, fellas. It is action stations here this morning, Karinda. We have got 11 people hitting the river, two Viking kayaks, two rafts, more supplies you can poke a stick at. I've never seen so many dry bags in all my life, but they're going to come in very handy. Let's go, team. trip. We have arrived. How many sardines can you fit in a tin? What an amazing journey, that countryside when you finally crack through some of that thick bush, you look down and see this mighty river. I cannot tell you about the excitement, the anticipation. We've got about 9,752 kilos of gear to take down to that river and then we're going to do a bit of this and a bit of this. Well, a bit of this anyway. It's going to be huge. Welcome to the 
us know everyone. Uh, we're going to have a bit of a safety talk to start. Safety's pretty important, make sure we get it all right. Linton Hill from Snowy River Expeditions is putting us through our safety brief. So important when you're hitting this water, particularly the white water, that you have every aspect of safety covered. We've been on the river for three or four days. We want to make sure everyone gets home safely. So I'm going to have a very good listen. So we've got Just rest it right down here for a sec. That's all good there, mate. Beautiful. Happy days. Well, the mighty Snow River. This is Craig Ingram. Craig was born and bred in these parts. When I say these parts, I'm talking Far East Gippsland. And Craig, you love bass and you love the snowy, don't you? This is a spectacular river, and hopefully we can uh, you know, really hook into some really good big snowy bass. Now, the snowy bass, they've got an amazing story. We'll talk more about it later, but they're pretty near and dear to your heart, aren't they? Yeah, look, I've been fishing this river for you know, 25 years, and you know, when we first started, there wasn't too many people doing this sort of, sort of uh, you know, adventure. We're in a pretty remote country here, and uh, there's some uh, pretty spectacular scenery and, uh, and fishing to be had, so hopefully they turn on. The plan is, we're going to see it all, we're going to do it all, and we are going to have a lot of fun. Let's get this kayak in the water, mate. One of our pack horses, he is a gun. Young Will Ingram, 24 years of age. We're about to cross this massive rapid. We hear hollers coming from the gorge, and I believe Will has hooked a beautiful bass. So never go past a snag without having a cast. Show me this fish, mate. What an absolute stonk up. What'd it take? Uh, a spinnerbait. A spinnerbait. Look at that for a magnificent fish. How hard to pull? Uh, it pulled all right for the first couple of seconds, mate. But she gave up in the end. <laughs> you, you know, and that fish at 40 centimetres, as I guess about 40 centimetres, I reckon, probably about seven years old. And from what your father's been telling me, those fish were actually stocked in this river. Yeah. And isn't it good that people have put all this effort into stocking great so Australian we, natives? So we fishermen can come out and catch these beautiful fish. And they are absolutely amazing. The only problem is, mate, you're supposed to be the pack horse, not the fisherman. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I'm sorry that it wasn't you who caught the first one. Can you please learn to understand your role in this show? So I assume you release all your bass? Absolutely, Paul. Look at that. He's ready to go. Look at that. He's ready. They are big, fat fish, aren't they? And how, how clear is this water? You could see a bass sitting there. He's just getting the oxygen going back to his gills. What a perfect example of an Australian bass. What a perfect example of the fact that people can just come here and catch fish that are being pushed into the system. Okay. That is just black gold. Beautiful <laughs> land. Beautiful dinner. Better. We'll come out. Olives. This is not a bad fish either. It's a nice fish. And this is the twitching hour, or the witching oh, hour, isn't it? Yes. This is. This is. This is the time to be about bass fishing. Isn't that beautiful? How's the take? Yeah. Grab that on the surface. A nice Actually, fish. 
I got your rod for you, mate. Yeah, it's a cracking fish. That is huge. How fat are these things, mate? Yeah. No, they're a really good nick, and they just really indicates the uh, the amount of food that's you know in the system. This this is another one of those stock fish. Yep. So, so what, seven eight years old? Yeah, seven eight years old. And how big was he when he went in? No, oh, they're tiny little fingerlings. Just, just a fry. Yeah, just a fry. I've got but one technical question though. Have you been making television long? Because <laughs> see that thing on Rick's shoulder? It's called a camera. And we should and be looking at that. Well, the best thing is, when you cast, Rick's actually got to be rolling for people to see it. So you just wait for that <laughs> next time, please. Okay, well, hopefully there's another one sitting up here for uh, for that take I'm pretty sure there might be. Another beautiful snow river bass. Going back for uh, someone else to catch another day. Well played. Yeah. Well played. And we're like 10 metres from camp. <laughs> we are 10 metres from camp. I might have just died and gone a little bit of bass fish in heaven. <laughs> His whole tail yeah. is out of the water and most of the fish. That was beauty. awesome. This is just wrong. I mean, when you look at the logistics oh, and the effort to get here, yeah. that makes it all worthwhile. That is... So it's been a hard day. It's hard to get here, but this well, is no good. when you say hard, you've got to look up at the gorge, you've got to look at the sky, the birds. How many, how many of those lizards have we seen today? What are they called? It's some water dragons. Like, I reckon I saw 20 of them. And then to come out, we've had a great feed and literally have a bit of a cast. And it's like almost every cast, surface fishing is about as good as life gets. Yeah, that is a cranking bass on a skitter pop too. Mate, that take, I just can't get enough of that. Oh, I can't get enough. Now come to Papa and show us how big you are. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, it's about the same size. They're really, they're just good nick fish, aren't they? They are so fat, so solid, and they look healthy, don't they? Yeah, no, they're a good nick. And Australia is the only place in the world to catch these fish. Yep. And this is, you know, it's been a renowned sort of fishery, the, the snowy. Yep. And uh, that's really what we're trying to rebuild that fishery. There's a stocked fish, you know, and, uh, you know, governments put a lot of effort into, uh, you know, putting over 500,000 fish over, you know, the last sort of, you know, six, seven years uh, into the system. And that's the result. You know, you got these cracking fish. Well, at the moment, there's only 499,999 <laughs> in the water because there's one in my hand. Sorry, I was never good at maths, but I was very good at fishing. Isn't that awesome? There's two reasons I want to get this bass back as quick as possible. One, the fish is welfare. And two, there's plenty more out there. I reckon next cast, we might get another. There you go, bassy boy. He's just so tough. Watch him go. Look at that, straight down. Right, we've got a job to do. Craig, cast now, quick, hurry. <laughs> I tell you what, my new water snake electric motor, it's about 300 pound thrust. It's the quietest electric I've ever had. Left, it's called the Willmeister. Left, right. Simon once said, nothing like the sounds of silence. It is just so cool out here tonight. All we can hear are frogs, insects, birds, and the odd bass going boof. The good news, hot session, a few bass on surface lures, that's what it's all about. And I believe Craig's even organised to certainly go back to camp. It just doesn't get any better. Beautiful morning on the Snowy River. What a fantastic night's sleep. Awesome breakfast. Nothing better than a cup of coffee or a billy of tea on the open fire. And now, back on the river, in search of these magnificent fish. I reckon, just around this corner, we're gonna find our first of the day. Bait. Yeah, it's a bit of a stick here. Guess I'm going to come back up. Really nice fat little fish. Yeah, these bass, they're just incredible fish in this river. It's, they're uh, just beautiful. Yeah, beautiful uh, um, Australian bass is one of the stocked ones um, as well. 
and uh, yeah, we've done a lot of work in getting those fish um, or we've done a lot of work in, in getting the, the river back to a reasonable condition. You know, we started out originally breeding these in my shed <laughs> and uh, you know, both fisheries and, and uh, the catchment management authorities in both New South Wales and Victoria have stocked about 500,000 of these uh, uh, in the snowy you know, over, over the last decade. So that fish potentially could have been bred in your shed? We did about 12,000. Uh, came originally out of my shed and with assistance with fisheries and one of the other hatcheries we uh, yeah we 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 you know were successful. That is what I call Australian ingenuity. And just over my right shoulder there's two massive goannas chewing on something. This place is just out of control. Just come to the shallows to release this fish and let it go to uh, someone else to catch another day. We've found the deepest part of the river so far, 5.8 metres. I actually see fish on the sounder, and I can see them following my spinnerbait coming all the way to the top. It's quite incredible. So there's fish here, you just got to keep trying different lures. Hard bodies, plastic, spinnerbaits, blacks, purples, whites. Just try everything you can until you finally get them to bite. Well, there's another one. I've done some really good soundings through this area and I know there's a really good hole just out the front of this beach. I'm going to pull the kayak up on the beach, I'm going to cast 10 or 20 times and get the lure to literally follow that bottom, follow that contour all the way down. I know it's deep, I can see there's fish there. All I need to do is get them in a box. Well, you've always got to be careful when you come to these parts of the world, but it's just about staying away from the native flora and fauna. That is a red-bellied black snake. I've come up on the shore here to have a bit of a fish, had a good look around first, and look at that. And isn't it amazing? I don't go over there with a shovel, I don't try and hit him, and guess what? He just goes away and minds his own business, because I'm bealing him, and that means he's a little bit scared. One of the lures that is very, very popular with these Australian bass is called a spinnerbait. They originated in America. And this little guy here is a classic little spinnerbait. He's got two blades. Now, I believe the back one is called a willow. I believe the front one is called a Colorado, but don't quote me. He's got this little bit of rubber down here on the hook, and all he does is goes along looking like a coat hanger. Those blades spin, and for some reason, the native fish just can't help themselves. The other great thing about these spinnerbaits, as it goes through debris, rocks, etc., it literally has a very small chance of getting hooked up, and that is fantastic news when you fish in heavy structure. so important these spinnerbaits that you get them to actually sink down. It takes time. Easy to cast it in, crank really quickly, and you're not going to get down to where the fish are. So I'll give them that time to sink, and it's just a matter of a really, really slow wind. I know it's about 4.7. Oh, yes! Oh, that's a solid fish. Oh, that's a nice bass. Come to Papa. These things are just the most awesome, awesome fish. So solid, thick through the shoulders. Check out that guy there, look at that big tail. Look at that, you can still see the spinnerbait blade going tap, tap, tap as he just powers in, look at that. Actually almost look like a Murray cod as a gust of wind comes through that would blow a dog off a chain. Their shoulders are so thick, they look like a cod as they come up. Look at that for an awesome fish. And that is very, very similar to the other fish we've been catching in this part of the world. Australian bass, big tail, big head, some nasty hardware there, that's why I'm wearing gloves, does help. And when it comes to spawning, this fish could potentially lay around 500,000 eggs. Big fish have been known to lay up to 950,000 eggs. And even though they're right up here in the fresh, they need to go into salt water to spawn, and they need some sort of environmental trigger to make it happen. That's unbelievable, I love these things. The oldest fish aged in this area, I'm gonna put him back for a bit of a swim, 47 years, so they're very long lived too. A little silly question, but obviously you love your rafting. Yeah, love love going rafting, you know, down, down the rivers. What is it about being on a river that you really, really love? Um, oh, I've been in the environment, um, been taken by the water. Um, natural elements are always a really interesting thing. Um, yeah, and, and the unknown, I think, is a really good thing too, sometimes. Yeah. The unknown is good, uh, so yeah. You just never know what's around that next yeah, corner. Yeah, that's right. Two massive rock 
rocks have blocked the river. The only way to get through, take a bit of the gear off and try and push him to that small hole just over there. They're going, they're going. So for people watching, obviously they're thinking, oh, look, it's too hard. I haven't got a raft, I haven't got kayaks. Can they physically talk to you and come and do this exact experience? Yes, yeah, no problem. Yeah, we can we can organise it. There's you know, the best time of year um, is a bit uh, is probably spring and early summer, um, and, uh, and yeah, we can organise that no problem. So they can come along, catch some fish, have some damp on the campfire, have a swim. And mums are watching. The big question: Is it safe? Oh, it's very safe. We make it safe. I'm going to sit a bit closer to him then because he promises it's safe, and I've got a bad habit of flipping my yak. What's the plan for this evening session, Craig? Well, I think we'll uh, work down through this gorge a bit here, the rocks, and, and uh, sort of fish with some divers and spinnerbaits for a little while. And, and uh, it won't be too long, and I think we'll be uh, switching back to the surface again. And, and uh, I reckon they, uh, they might turn on. It's a pretty good night. It's nice, isn't it? Camp in the background, deep water. What more could you want? Apart from a few bass, perhaps. Yeah, a few, a few nice bass, you know. I know they're here. All we need to do is uh, tempt them to uh, hit one of these lures. We're about two hours from sunset and Craig and I are fishing two very different techniques. He's got a surface lure on, I've got a spinnerbait that's going all the way to the bottom. Really important is to keep trying different things until one of them works, then you can both switch to whatever that is. Three, none, it's like a soccer score. Three love. I'm going back again. He, he felt it that time, unfortunately. He's, there's a crack I can see in the rocks here. He's literally coming out of that crack. That is amazing. As you can see how shallow it is here, eh? Yep. Oh, you weren't even looking. <laughs> you weren't even looking. That's just cruel, <laughs> wrong, and indecent. You were telling me where to cast. Oh, I reckon that's why you looked at it, because you weren't even looking. He was just telling us that he's one of the best bass anglers in all of Gippsland. He can put a lure on a 20 cent piece from 100 metres. And now, you caught the fish there. No, I just dropped it. Oh, no! <laughs> you didn't! Yeah, I just dropped it. Ingram! Oh, I take wow. it in my country, my backyard, <laughs> and you stuff it up. Uh. Oh, the things we do. Well, you know what I'm going to do? Put a surface lure on. If I've learnt one thing, if you can't succeed, copy some of this. He's in a hot cave. Go in. That's the car stuff one you just dropped. Yeah. And he snagged you. <laughs> oh. We'll get him out. Get over the top of him. That is just mind blowing. You gonna get him? I think he's in the lead, is he? Or a snag? Oh. No, he's dropped too. Oh. I've, got a, I've got an interesting question for you, uh, Craig. Have you been fishing long? Obviously not. You, are you watching what I did before when I lost three in a row? You got one to go, mate. <laughs> you know why? We don't go fishing ones attached, we go fishing for the ones we lost. Because they're the ones that make you come back. What is it about the bass and their plight that got you really, really fired up about 20 years ago, I imagine? Yeah, look, well, we were canoeing this river. We you do this section of the river every, uh, every year with a group of mates. And, and what we're finding, there's no small fish in the system. There's no, there's no variety. And uh, you know we we sort of looked at why there's a lot of really big fish, but um, you know you're really struggling to find any new recruitment. So that's sort of got to try to find out why. And uh, and you know look the the headwaters of this river is you know dammed with the Snowy Hydro scheme, 
and at that stage there's only 1% of the, the original flow of the river coming down downstream and that has really upset the whole balance of this river. So that probably started my you know, cause, looking, looking at the uh, stocks of fish, what's going on and uh, from that we started uh, you know, brooding them in the shed. So what possessed you to get brood stock, take in your garden shed and try and make little baby bass? We started with trying to get a uh, New South Wales hatchery to, to breed them and uh, they were unsuccessful uh, and there's a number of reasons for that. They actually breed uh, later in the year in Victoria than they do in New South Wales. So a lot of the, uh, most of the documentation on bass is on, based on the New South Wales system. So, so we learnt a fair bit about um, about the fish, I did, a lot about the fish and, and uh, so we'll, if people, other people can't do it then let's have a crack at it ourselves. Solid fish too. We actually saw him. He come up and he boofed. I put the lure over. I missed him. And Will said, "Leave him. Come back. You'll come back." I left it. Oh, it's a nice fish. And then, oh, he's had a few warworms too. As you saw, and isn't that amazing? And he came up and ate something off the top. How good is it to put a surface lure on a fish you see and nail him? That is just so cool for school and too cool for school too. Mate, he's all yours. Look at that fish. That's on that uh, skitter pop again. The skitter pop. And I like that fluoro colour too, fire yeah. tiger. Yep. And how's the bloop it makes? That bloop. Yeah, that's no, basically a good sound. So uh, obviously that fish loved it. Oh, mate, it did. Now tell me, why do bass float your boat? You've put a lot of time and effort into these fish. Oh, they're just great aggressive fish. You sort of come up here in this beautiful country and you know they take lures like that off the surface and you know, they, sometimes they can be frustrating, they don't always play the game, but when you get a, you know, look, we've had you know, a number of hits here tonight without uh, hooking up. So. It's now eight hits for one fish, but how much fun is it losing them? Well, it's spectacular fun, you know, you just sort of, you know, cast an allure around these spots and get those great spectacular surface hits. It's great fun, mightn't land as many, but it's, it's much greater, uh, you know, enjoyment. That's what it's all about. Let's get this fish back, because speaking of enjoyment, I think there's a few more out there we need to catch. When it comes to bass, really good to handle them by holding the belly, thumb in the mouth. You've got a great mouth for holding, and just put him in the water like that, support that drawing until he's ready to go. You see his tail will start to kick, and I can physically have a loose grip, and he oh. to see a big caudal fin going, adios amigo, I'm going home. That little lure is making the big commotion. Is a Rapala skitter pop fire tiger, absolute gun. Tiny little cup face grabs the water and goes boop, boop. And the bass, they just love them. Are you sleeping, mate? Yeah, I'll see. Now, that's not the first time you put a, bait, a surface bait over that spot, is it? No. So, you reckon the fish has moved in because of the commotion? Yeah, maybe. This is come from one of those little uh, holes over there. It's not a real big fish, this one. But yeah, you know what? Every fish on a surface lure is a great fish. Yeah. And I'm amazed because we cast, 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 <laughs> and then he come up. Whereas I would have thought once you'd cast a few times, time to move on. He's putting a pretty good show up for, uh, for slightly smaller than the other runner fish was there. Yeah, it's all good. And what is blowing your way, the fish in the system, they're all pretty big, aren't they? They're all really fat fish. They're all in really good condition. Now, the big fish in the system, how big are they, like the, the big fish? Yeah, well, well mate, you, can, uh, you can get fish in this place uh, well over the uh, 50 centimetre mark, and that's really what we're sort of targeting here. Hopefully we can come up with one of those. But, uh... Now that's the smallest fish we've come across, but for anyone who wanted to go bass fishing for the first time, or even the tenth time, that's what you would expect to catch, isn't it, in yep. most Australian waterways? Yep, and uh, small fish like this one, you know, they still put up a great fight on the surface. They're still, yeah, still a, a cracking fish to catch. We're going to let this uh, fish go quick because there's plenty more to catch. Oh, chase him right oh there. yes! You saw him? Yeah. How'd you see him? I saw the boil. You saw the boil? In the trade, we like to call that a Susan, mate. <laughs> he literally, good fish. 
I think he's all right. He's pretty good. Yeah, he better get up there. He's got me around the rocks. That was awesome. He's, he's in under the rocks. That's all right. We should be able to get him out. That's it. He's out. Just a little fella, mate. Now, at least he's got some serious hardware, Craig. Can you just explain, if people want to come bass fishing, what do they look out for on a bass that could cause them a bit of, bit of grief? Uh, there's some uh, fairly good spikes there, and, yep. and the gill brackers will truly will open you up uh, pretty seriously. They, they've got a, a, a number of spots where they cut you, and uh, they, they do really uh, uh, do some damage. I like these anal spines, ouch, and also those nasty dorsal spines. When I say I like them, I like avoiding them. Yeah, you can avoid those. Mate, these hits are coming thick and fast. I am loving the fact that you're spotting the fish, saying there he is, and then bang. That's pretty cool. So what the fish are doing, they're coming up behind the lure and you see this little boil in behind the fish and they let it sit, twitch it again, and they, they just climb all over it. Got to have it. See you mate, come back another day. That is a beautiful thing. There he is. Oh, he missed it, he didn't even touch it. Didn't even touch it. He's come down. He's come down. That hit the water and got it snacked. Back straight I'll still, on. I'll still want to do a fish swim away, mate. <laughs> oh, that was a cracker. I don't know if it's that big. It's just days on your puff. There's just the hit. Look yeah. at that. How's that for a strike? <laughs> <laughs> if I was at the bowling alley, that would have been a strike. <laughs> that is awesome. They must be sitting there waiting for feed now. That, that They're coming hit. down on that fast water. Yep. Hit and bang. Can I grab that or you want me to grab it? Uh, mate, you can grab it if you're, if you're game. You're still a bit green, if you know what I mean. When I say green, these bass, they're green, aren't they, mate? Yeah, it's, well, they're fairly dark green, dark green in colour. But uh, that's another cracking snow river fish. You know what's killing me? I snorkeled through here this afternoon. I went down to 4.8 metres. I did all I could. I never saw any sign of life, fish, nothing. And now, we're smacking bass almost every cast. They're sneaking in under these rocky crevices and they're, they're sitting there everywhere. So, yeah, it's a... Bit of great fun to hit that lure just straight away. Didn't even get a chance to wind. <laughs> Unbelievable. Let's get him back. I'll pop him back for you, Paulie. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Just in case I forget to tell you later. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> oh, boil. There's a boil. There's a fish on my lure. Watch my lure. There's a fish on it. Come on. There, and there yeah, he is. There he is. That is just awesome. And not a monster, but that take. In fact, this could be the smallest fish I've caught for the trip. But that take to see the boil, and you just got to be so focused, don't you, mate? You just got to watch that lure the whole time. Oh, I just heard another fish book over there. <laughs> uh, mate, this is actually a very solid bass. Um, <laughs> come here, Mr. Bass. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. I say a smaller fish, I reckon he's about as big as the others. <laughs> and he is blind in one eye. This fish is actually blind. His left eye is totally glassed over. He's blind. That eye, perfectly clear. And that's another great indication of just how tough these fish are. Like foxes or rabbits, underwater rabbits, they are tough. They can survive just about anything. And that is why I cast this to his right side. So I saw him coming for it, and he missed when I twitched it to the left. So I twitched it to the right, bang, straight away. Now, if you believe that, there's some serious issues. I think you should see a shrink. Okay, first hook out. That's the benefit of using these tiny VMC trebles. Very fine gauge, they come out quite easily. Second hook out, and away he goes. How many bass must be down there when every single cast you get to follow a boil or a big take? 